Many users online have discussed and talked about a particular Filipino commercial for a flower shop known as Encarnacion Bechaves they had seen during the 90s and early 2000s. With this commercial, according to generally most sources, being unintentionally creepy and disturbing to viewers. Despite all these different people online providing their own recollections, descriptions, and memories of this one particular flower shop commercial, not a single copy of the commercial has been uploaded onto the internet. The commercial is considered lost. On July 4th, 2022, the Lost Media Wiki launched their very own sixth on the hunt search, with this flower shop commercial being the topic chosen for the search. These on the hunt searches bring the community together and put awareness on a certain case of lost media, with hopes of recovery. It has been a fair while since this on the hunt flyer was posted onto the Lost Media Wiki Twitter account, and this commercial is still yet to be found. I always found this case to be pretty fascinating. It has for sure caught my interest and for some time have wanted to discuss it in a video. So let's explore this mysterious commercial advertisement. Our story begins all the way back to April 2000, when the first mention of this commercial is created on the online forum known as Pinoy Exchange. A user who goes by Zafni had made a comment on April 22nd, 2000, in reply to the topic of what the worst commercials on television were users had seen. Zafni said, There is another super annoying commercial. Have you guys ever seen that flower shop commercial? the Ancona Chambre Chavez. Although the mention is incredibly brief and doesn't give much detail at all, this is in fact the very first mention of it and is interestingly listed as annoying. A short while later on June 3rd, 42 days after the first mention, the commercial would be mentioned once again, this time in a different thread discussing similarly the most irritating commercial users had seen. The commercial of Encarnacion Bechaves. One decade seems to have passed and is still not being replaced. A user would reply to this comment. Agree. Actually, every time I see that commercial, I can't bear to look at that girl at the end. She really looks like a witch. Over the years, the commercial would be mentioned and referenced several more times by all different users. From it first being alluded to back in April 2000, the commercial would be mentioned in the Pino Exchange forums over 30 times up until 2016. Just to list a few of the mentions. March 2008, in reply to favorite Pinoy commercial. The flower commercial in Carnachon Bechaves. Their female model is scary. I don't know why they picked that model. This aired on channel 13. October 2011. Encarnacion Bechaves is a flower shop. The commercial's background music and TV is Shepherd Moons by Enya. October 2013. Please, only if anyone can find a commercial of Encarnacion Bechaves. I YouTubed it, but it's nowhere to be seen. My hair will stand goosebumps if I can watch it again. March 2016. The final mention of it on the Pinoy Exchange forums. The commercial is kinda eerie, then there is a spinning bouquet of flowers and then there is a scary woman with makeup. It really seems like this flower commercial had a pretty huge impact on most people who watched it. Although there was no huge organized search effort like there is now, it still seemed like a great load of people were in hopes to recover this commercial and see it once again. With all these different mentions, a lot of information would be uncovered regarding the commercial. It was learned to have aired specifically from 1993 to 2005, and seems to have appeared mainly on the TV channels ABC5, RPN9, and IBC13. 
viewers of the commercial also remembered specifically when the commercials had appeared. For example, users had stated they remember seeing this commercial air on IBC 13 during the ad breaks for Mask Man, Masked Rider Black, and All Star Wrestling. There are many more recollections to when this ad was specifically on. I'll put a link in the description to this commercial's Lost Media Wiki article in which they list more speculations to when the commercial aired if you're interested in that. Over the past couple years, the search for this commercial would begin to rise up in popularity. In 2018, the commercial would turn into a hot topic within the Spooky Advertisements Facebook group, which mainly focused on creepy Filipino commercials. It was discussed upon and its disappearance was brought up. The commercial would as well be brought up and discussed many times on Reddit, with users giving detailed descriptions regarding their own recollections. With all of the eyewitnesses who remember this commercial and through what has been gathered from all the information online about it, a good idea of the commercial's premise can be made. We have a pretty detailed understanding regarding what is specifically known to be in the commercial, the specific order of when things appear, and as well what is said in the narration. With all this detailed information known, I thought it would be pretty fun and cool to make my own little mock-up and recreation of the commercial to the best of my ability. I'll be using mainly stock footage to recreate this commercial, so apologies if some of the stuff in this mock-up isn't exactly and specifically true to what is meant to be in the commercial. But yeah, it should be definitely close to what the original is meant to look like, so hope you enjoy. When you care enough to send the best, Say it with flowers, from Encarnacion Chavez. When the occasion becomes special, you can make it more special with flowers from Encarna Shamba Chavez. Encarna Shamba Chavez, when you want to show how much you really care. Some additional information. Some people have gone on to claim that the lady in the commercial was Filipino actress Sita Estals. However, this is not confirmed and is merely just speculation by a couple users online who have seen the commercial. It is, however, generally mostly agreed and stated that her scene was much more unsettling than necessary to promote flowers. There have also been claims that a short version of the commercial might have existed and aired alongside the long version, which would have lacked one of the scenes most people are in search for. This shorter version was set to run for 15 seconds and aired during the time frame of 1993 to 1994. And finally, something I found quite interesting which popped up in my YouTube recommended feed while editing was this video simply titled Encarnacion Chavez. This video was published back in 2008, way before the search for this commercial really started to make its move. The video isn't in English. However, a user in the comments section would describe the context of the video, and as well translate what is being said. The guy on the computer plays an Enya song, which reminds one of his friends about the Encarna Chamba Chavez commercial, as the singer also made the song used in the commercial. Or possibly the friend misremembers the song in the computer as the song in the commercial. They talk about the commercial. So, as of today, this commercial has remained completely lost and has straight up disappeared, with the only proof of its existence being the countless recollections over the years. Hopefully soon this commercial resurfaces. It would be really interesting to just see why this commercial was so impactful and why so many people remember it extremely well in detail. Was the commercial truly as scary as most people recall it? We may never know.
I'm sure most of you watching this by now are familiar with the film Food Fight. In short, Food Fight is a CGI animated movie created by Threshold Animation Studios. The original film looked incredibly different to what would eventually be published and seen by the world, and was originally locked in for a Christmas 2003 release. However, the creator of the film had ended up deleting the original files. After a long road of development, Food Fight had been finally released in 2012, and would be met with mostly negative reviews. Although being in development for a whole decade and containing a huge famous cast, the movie is horrible, and is considered by many to be one of the worst animated films of all time. The early version of Food Fight is a piece of lost media which has been talked about tremendously. It has been discussed heaps. However, something which has barely been talked about is the lost Food Fight game based on the animated film. October 13th, 2021. User Jacob Lenstar would create a post on the Lost Media subreddit discussing the existence of a Food Fight video game. A friend pointed out while watching footage of E3 2006, a video game based on the movie Food Fight can be seen. A link was provided. This piece of footage is insane. A whole booth for a demo for a Food Fight 3D platformer was available to play at E3 2006. Footage of it had existed online for all these years, and this Reddit post is the first ever documentation of it. The first time anyone on the internet would discuss its existence. That's just crazy to me. Jacob's Reddit post would give more additional information writing about what we actually know about the game from what is seen in the footage. It would have been published by Global Star Software and released for GameCube, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation 2, and other consoles. There is absolutely no information online about this, and this footage is the first time ever seen or hearing about it. It looks like it would have been a 3D platformer where you play as Dex Dog Detective. Does anyone have any further information? To answer Jacob's question, no one had any further information. This game is incredibly mysterious. A couple users on Reddit had decided to do some digging, contacting companies that were potentially involved with the game in hopes to recover any information. A user who goes by the real mega rich went on to email someone that worked at Vicious Cycle back in 2006. In the footage, we can see Vicious Cycle's logo in the center of the uppermost row. Former employee David Ellis had responded. Hey, got your message from my site. I definitely hadn't heard of the game before, although it does look like an inverted color version of our logo on that screenshot, hard to tell though. I checked with Eric Peterson, owner and CEO of Vicious Cycle, and he confirmed that we never had anything to do with a food fight game. After publishing Dora the Explorer with Global Star, we never worked with that publisher again. So if someone was doing a game based on Food Fight, it wasn't Vicious Cycle. We really don't have any knowledge on this game whatsoever. The game is incredibly strange. Almost as strange as how my wife left me. I really feel like this piece of lost media deserves way more attention and discussion. When the Lost Media Wiki do another on the hunt search, this should definitely be something to raise notice on. I reckon this would be awesome to be as a on the hunt search. It would be awesome to know more information on this game and perhaps see more actual gameplay footage. But for now, this video game is a mystery. This next entry is most likely going to be a very small portion of the video, as all this entry is, is a post from a user discussing a piece of media from their childhood which appears to be lost. 
This entry and the piece of media which is discussed is pretty obscure, and a lot of you I feel will not find this to be the most fascinating piece of lost media out there, but I found it interesting. I wasn't even sure whether this thing even counted as lost media when first reading upon this post. It leaned more to unidentified media. However, most likely thousands of people have seen this post and we still don't have any type of answer. I believe that it fits well into the category of media which has become lost. So, let's talk about this mysterious and bizarre lost anti-piracy measure. October 20th this year. A user who goes by Opdi101 had posted onto the Internet Mysteries subreddit, creating a post which would be titled, Bizarre anti-piracy measure my dad ran into when I was a kid. No idea what it was for. Help? This is what the post had to say. While I'm not entirely sure what this anti-piracy measure was for per se, I've always had the memory of it vividly in my head. When I was little, my dad used to torrent stuff. Like, a lot. And because it was the early 2000s, ridiculous, creepy anti-piracy measures were a lot more common at that point than they are now. Since you guys seem to be pretty good at tracking weird s down, I suppose you could help me work out what game slash piece of software had this. Here's what I remember. My dad was trying to use a serial key that he found on some legitimate website to unlock a piece of software. The software in question I believe is some sort of video ripping program for early Mac OS X. It turned out that the key was a fake or something, because as soon as he pasted it in, a very loud text-to-speech voice came through the speaker, causing a very young me to rapidly avert my attention from my Legos and look at the computer. I remember the voice saying something like, It isn't nice to steal shareware, you know? Or something similarly condescending. Before his browser automatically opened with a black screen with the red graffiti text on a black background that said Peito was here, and then the current date. Funnily, I then remember my dad silently panicking and trying to close the window and then deleting the thing he was trying to torrent. I have asked my dad about this and he totally recalls the incident but also can't place what exactly he was trying to download. I actually got most of the smaller details from him. But the main thing I remember from when I was a kid was that damn Peito was here screen. Something about that randomly popping up on the screen really unsettled me as a kid for reasons I can't explain, considering you know it was just text. Does anyone have a vague recollection of what this was or perhaps the name of it? It would be greatly appreciated. Edit. Rough approximation of what I remember it looking like. This sounds pretty interesting. Anti-piracy lost media is something you don't really ever hear about. The post was well received on the Internet Mystery subreddit, and a lot of users came into discussion. A user had responded to the post, stating they too have a recollection of this. Holy crap. I absolutely remember this as well. Was your dad into ripping DVDs maybe? Because I seem to have a vivid memory of this exact same screen having to do with a DVD decryptor program or something like Roxio Media Creator that was also involved with DVD ripping as well. But I don't remember the details as to how or why it was involved. This takes me back to my bedroom at my parents' house, spending hours waiting on torrents to download using dial-up, only to find out it was something completely different. Many other users would reply with comments, giving their own thoughts and ideas on this. The issue is that it likely doesn't exist anymore, and what doesn't help is that it's probably something not many people have come across, so you might have an extremely difficult time figuring this one out. I think it was placed into the program intentionally, with the key being posted by the developers as part of the trick. I myself try to do a bit of research, looking through the internet for anything to do with Peito was here and the it isn't nice to steal shareware you know voice that Opie heard and I resulted empty handed, couldn't find anything. And that's all we know so far. This bizarre anti-piracy measure is a mystery.
I know a lot of you probably don't find this interesting whatsoever, but I don't know, it's just really an obscure and small little mystery and I don't know, I just came across this and thought it was interesting enough to put in this list. Hopefully this video brings a bit more attention to the search for this anti-piracy measure. Perhaps one of you watching actually have some knowledge on what this is. And OP will once again be able to view upon this old memory from their childhood.